The word drones and what often comes to mind are images of small remote controlled aircraft operated by the military firing missiles at suspected terrorists. But there is a growing civilian industry that sees big profits and many useful purposes in the unmanned flying machines. Bill Capo talks to those who say things are about to take off and to those who have concerns. Bert Leslie built model airplanes as a boy, but the small four-blade helicopter he now flies is not a toy. It's a sign of the future, but still... How much fun are you having? I'm having a ball. The former Coast Guard member wants to start his own business flying small remote-controlled aircraft that carry cameras or other instruments in search and rescue operations. I see them saving lives. Is what I see them doing. Just don't call it a drone. No, drones has a very uh, Terminator rise of the machines <laughs> negativity about it. We don't like to be associated with the term drone because it evokes an image of uh, wartime. Civilian remote controlled aircraft industry pioneers call them UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles. Charles Easterling and Aaron Grant rent space in the huge Michoud facility for their three year old company designing the Bravo 300. It's not a toy, uh, it's, a, it's a high performance machine. It flies for about an hour. It could carry five pounds. We get phone calls every day from all over the world. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, uh, people in Africa that want to stop poaching. Uh, we got guys in Colorado that want to count bighorn sheep. If there's a chemical spill, if there's somewhere that a person can't go safely, we can send these lightweight aircraft in. We can survey the damage. I recently flew over the Bayou Corn sinkhole. LSU Agricultural Center research engineers Charles Malvo and Randy Price are using six UAV models in studies to help farmers. They just see all kinds of possibility from checking crops to consultants that can take it out there really quickly fly over see if there's a trouble spot to spraying herbicide resistant weeds in the future. There's all kinds of possibilities for these things. You want to make sure that the government is not spying on you and drones are just another way that potentially the government could spy on people if they are not used correctly. The ACLU's Marjorie Essman wants laws to protect privacy. That's scary. Uh, now, if there is probable cause to believe that there's criminal activity and the drones are used pursuant to a warrant and, and the appropriate constitutional safeguards, um, then it, there might be a legitimate need for it. What we don't want is for these to be the devices of Big Brother that continually stare down the people. What we'd like is for them to be uh, very well regulated. I've talked with officials in both Orleans and Jefferson parishes. They've both looked at the issue of UAVs, but neither parish owns them or has plans to buy them at this point. In fact, across the country, they're waiting for the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, to make up the rules to govern this industry, including BERT. Yes, sir. The FAA promises rules will be ready next year to cover safety concerns, where UAVs can fly, how they share airspace with passenger jets, and operator training. But UAV makers want permission now to use them in rural areas, saying the FAA is moving too slowly for an industry with growing demand. I definitely think it's a multi-billion dollar industry. You'll see an explosion of the technology in a way that we could have never expected. So when do you design a UAV that people can ride to work? <laughs> well, Lady Gaga did already if you YouTube that. Bert Leslie sees drones handling search and rescue far more efficiently when the next Katrina strikes. They already know there's a family here, there's one here, there's one here, because these have already gone out and blanketed the area. That is probably the best and highest use, uh, you know, is to save lives. I'm Bill Capo, Eyewitness News.